What is going on? YouTube Carter here with Edged Mindset. We're taking a look at the Spartan Knives Harsey Folder. This is the Warthog Edition uh, that I picked up from DLT Trading. I believe it was a DLT exclusive. I don't know why. Um, I'm not sure if it's this pattern's exclusive to them. I don't think it is. I don't know. Some of those DLT exclusives are uh, a little questionable. You know, they're like, well, it's exclusive because the the back pivot is one millimeter smaller than the standard edition. Just kidding. I'm kidding. I love DLT. But uh, sometimes their term exclusive is a little lackluster in what you actually get. But uh, nevertheless, this is not how I wanted to start this video. We're taking a look at this knife. I want to give you an opinion. Do I recommend you buy this thing? Um, or should you pass? And of course, that's subjective. There's a lot of videos on this knife. I'm not going to spend a ton of time going over specs and how it's used and things like that. I do want to talk about um, a few thoughts on the niche this knife fills, some of the things people say, all those kind of things. Let's do some specs. So this is the, the full size version. There's full size and then there's the small. The small I think is a 3.25 inch blade. This one has like a four inch blade, maybe slightly, no, about four inches exact. Um, overall length, we're looking about nine inches, almost exactly just under, I guess. Just under nine inches, so a nice, big, beautiful folder. Size comparisons, let's do paramilitary two. You know what time it is. We gotta compare it to the PM2. Bigger than the PM2, obviously. And more importantly, this is gonna come into play later, let's compare it to a large and cozy. Bigger than the large and cozy. But some people, some people like to say that the Harsey folder is like uh, if a Chris Reeves Sabenza had sex with a Strider or sometimes it's a Medford, this is the baby that would be born, something like that. Um, and some people don't understand that comparison. I do. I think it makes sense. I actually think that. So part of the point of this video is to go through why that statement uh, I don't think is ridiculous. Some people say it's ridiculous. I think those are, you know, kind of Chris Reed fanboys. They get caught up on the weeds, right? Because we're just, we're not talking like this is as good as a Sabenza. What we're saying, so six ounces, pretty hefty. So what we're saying is there's some similarities there. Uh, some of them are visual. You know, I mean, there's, there's a definite, you know, they're not copying each other. But there's a definite like, okay, you know, slender design, longer than it is wide. It's got finger troils, especially this in Kosi here, uh, kind of looks similar. And by that, I, I don't by any means mean anybody lifted anybody's design, right? I'm just saying in terms of design language, they're within the same city or maybe even ballpark. It's a big ballpark, maybe. We'll talk a little bit more about that here in a minute. Let's go over some general doodads and whatnots. So the blade is S45VN. Um, they used to use S35VN. Now they use S45VN. Another nod to the Inkosi, just like Chris Reeve. They both use the same steel. Has a polished, uh, polished, um, stonewashed finish, polished stonewashed finish. As you can see, you can hardly even see the stonewashing, but it comes through. It's really nice. Uh, flat ground blade. This one's hollow ground, by the way. Slight hollow ground, but still hollow ground. Um, nice clip on the top here with the swedge. Looks really good. Very usable. A little bit of belly. A lot of cutting length. Um, when you're talking about blade to handle ratio, this one does really, really good. You get a lot of blade for that handle. It's almost a one-to-one. -one. So very good on that front. If that is something that you care about myself, it's not one of my top things. But when a knife has a little blade and a giant handle, it bugs me. Um, I, don't, I don't care about getting it like as close as possible, but that definitely bugs me. Double thumb studs here. I believe they are titanium. Very usable. They work well. You can flick it open. Very nice. Phosphor bronze washers. Not as sophisticated as these washers at all. Uh, one is big, one is little. So the one on this side is really, really small to accommodate for this cutout, and the one on this side is really, really big. The Sebenza actually has custom washers that are cut to fit this exact shape. 
so that they can be as big as they can possibly be and not stick out or run into stop pins and things like that. So uh, definitely, you know, those kind of touches with the Chris Reeve, you know, I, I think some people overlook uh, because they're not obvious, right? They're not what you see, but um, a lot of thought in this knife. This one doesn't have that, right? It's not as refined. They, they don't do that. Standard washers, giant one over here, little one over here. Uh, these used to have an internal over travel on the inside here, but they've since increased the pivot on this side, which then acts as the over travel now. Titanium handles, uh, shaped, not sculpted, but everything is nice and chamfered. Everything is nice and smooth. You've got two standoffs in the back here. I assume they're titanium anodized. This has an external stop pin configuration that does the stop in the open position and then the same pin does it in the closed position. Nice and centered. You know, overall the, the basic machining of this thing is, is done really, really well. Um, everything is nice. Some people complain about the size of this cutout. I'm torn. On one hand, it, it kind of looks cool. On the other hand, I see the concern about uh, getting debris and stuff in there and potentially affecting the action. And then, of course, there's no benefit to it. Uh, you run the risk of allowing more movement on the lock bar moving in. I don't really see that happening, though. So enough material to prevent it, I guess, over here. Uh, another interesting thing is they did the lock bar cutout on the inside, uh, which is nice because it keeps this nice and clean. But more importantly, you don't get that little ravine that your um, pocket lip gets caught in, which can be a pain sometimes depending on the, the pocket clip style. Same thing on the Chris Reeve, inside cutout there. This has a double scallop. This has a single uh, channel cutout here. Pocket clip is fine, titanium. Uh, it's just bent steel, not sculpted or anything, but same thing on the Chris Reeve. A few more bends, a little more elegant, but same concept, just a bent titanium pocket clip there. Um, action on this thing, though, is, is really smooth. And I think that's where you'll see a lot of comparison with the Chris Reeve. It's got that kind of hydraulic smoothness. Not as smooth as this. So don't, don't kill me in the comments. Not as smooth as the Chris Reeve, but pretty dang smooth, especially since this is a little bit more of a, a hard-use, big bruiser-type knife. Um, it fits that niche a little bit more than the Sebenza does or the uh, the Incosi in this case. Thickness is it's a little bit thicker, but not uh, not insanely so. Just a little bit thicker. Not not too not too crazy. You can see the closed silhouettes are about the same, right? This one's just a little bit bigger, a little bit wider, a little bit thicker. Kind of an upsized version of the Sebenza. Some people call it a, a hard use Sebenza. I, I don't really see that. Um, to me, there's nothing inherently more hard use about the Harsey folder. I mean, everything is kind of scaled up, right? Uh, handles are thicker, blade is thicker, it's longer, it's wider. Uh, to me, that's about it. It's just a scaled up, for the most part, scaled up version of uh, the Sebenza. This is an Nkosi. Different lock mechanism. This uses a ceramic ball. This one is just titanium on steel. And I'll, I want to talk about that. I don't love that. Uh, don't love that. I wish this had a lock bar insert. Um, it is sticky, still has stick, and lockup is pretty dang late. So that's another similarity with uh, the Sebenza, you could say. Sebenzas are known, and I'm talking pre-ceramic ball Sebenzas. Sebenzas were known to have late lockup right out of the box. Now, they were machined in a way that they would have a lot of contact, so it wouldn't really wear out, and they didn't really have a lot of stick issues. Sometimes you would get that. It's a similar thing here. You can see how much contact is being made. It's not, uh, it's not just the corner, like a strider, where just the corner is contacting the lock face. Um, it is pretty much the entirety of the whole lock face. So that should mean that it shouldn't move too much more, but it still makes me nervous. I would have much preferred this to come out of the box, you know, about, about there you know, 25, 30% out of the box with the idea being that as you flick it open, as you use it, as it wears in, it would settle into about here after a few months of playing with it and things like that. Uh, but really it came out of the box at like 50% and then it very quickly went to about, what is that, 80%? 
uh, pretty quickly. Um, I have not played with this thing a ton. I have not used this thing a ton. And that lock face has really gone over. But the other thing that bugs me with the lock face is it's uh, hard to get my thumb in there. I've got big, fat thumbs. And you can see it, it barely sits proud. It does sit proud on this lock side face, but or lock side, but barely, barely. Like there is just nothing there. You can see on the Sebenza, it's very proud. So this thing could be all the way over and you would have no problems disengaging this lock. This lock could, could be touching the other scale and you would still be able to successfully unlock it. This one, not as much. Um, and it doesn't really have any recesses. Uh, the, the chamfering is actually on the show side. So you do kind of get this uh, sharp edge, which allows you to get some traction. But I'll be honest, I've kind of slipped trying to open this thing a few times. Um, so I, I don't love that lock face. I don't love the percentage it came out at the box, especially for a knife that isn't as precision made as like a Sebenza. I don't trust that it's going to settle here forever, right? I think it's going to keep moving over maybe. Uh, but more importantly, it's difficult for me to get in there. I, there's like, even there, it just wants to slip off. I cannot, I cannot get my thumbs inside that little recess. There's just, there's nothing there. So either I want this a few millimeters prouder, or I want this even more chamfered on the inside so that you can really get in there or ideally maybe both. Um, I don't like that. Now, Ergonomics, though, on this knife are some of the best I've felt in a while. Uh, it just melts in your hand. You've got these little troils here. You're not going to slip up on this blade. Super comfortable. Nothing. No hot spots. This pocket clip, um, even though a lot of people think it should be 3D milled at this price point, um, it just melts. There's nothing there. You can't feel anything. Reverse grip, just as good, if not better. Put your thumb on the top here. Everything is just so comfortable. Your pinky just fits right in there. The ergonomics on this knife are outstanding. Uh, better than the old ergonomics King uh, Emerson, in my opinion. Just really, really nice. Now let's talk elephant in the room. Oh, the graphics, right? That's kind of their claim to fame. And really the thing that kind of saves them, not because this knife is bad on its own. It, it definitely is. But in a sea of titanium frame locks, this is what made them kind of stand out. You can get all kinds of different graphics, different anodizing on these knives. And it seems like every year they look better and better. Like they're, the quality is better. The colors coordination is better. Um, just all around really, really nice. And as you can see here, this is deep etching. This is not like just a little laser that's making a picture. This is etching. This is actually inside the titanium. You can feel the texture and the precision of the different anodizing. Uh, I assume they're doing laser anodizing. It's really good. You're not getting much bleed off. And then also the small touches like um, you look at this and you're like, oh, it's like a, it's a green anodized scale. Well, all of these chamfered edges all have bronze coming through which connect to the bronze hardware throughout the knife. You can see all the edges there. Everything is nice and bronzed. Really good stuff. So is this a hard use Sebenza? I don't think so. Is this a Sebenza had a baby with a strider? I don't, I don't really think so either. In my mind, it's simply, I, I would say it's closer to saying it's a, it's a slightly beefed up Sebenza. Maybe you could say it's, Similar in some ways, but I also think it's not fair to compare it to a Sebenza. It's its own knife. Um, it's its own design. It's very useful. It's very clean. Um, it's very simple and elegant. It is larger than, you know, um, some other knives. But by no means would I call this like an excessively hard use or like tactically oriented knife. It's a large, everyday carry, everyday use kind of knife. Done well. Good materials. Looks really nice. Um... Like I said, the only thing is this lockup. And I think I could live with the late lockup because me saying that I think it's going to continue to move over, that's just conjecture. I have no idea. It may settle like this forever. Uh, but I would like to just, it would feel so much more confident if I could get in there a little bit better. Um, but other than that, 
really like these knives and the graphics are what makes it. Um, if that's not your thing, then I, I would maybe steer clear of these. Um, but otherwise, great knives. I would definitely recommend. So leave me a comment down below. What do you think of these knives? What do you think of this knife? The Warthog. I think it looks really cool. I love the colors, the green, the bronze. I don't really have a lot of uh, green knives or any green knives. So this is the only one. Uh, what do you think of this knife? Do you think it's a Strider Met A Sebenza or do you think it's its own thing altogether? Do you think that comparison is fair? Let me know. Leave a comment, leave a like, all that fun stuff. I'm out.